you know, I was just thinking. Now, there's a reason why the black church still exists and why it's bigger than it ever. Um, let me tell you what's on my mind about that. This is DJ Wolf Live. All right. Hey, now, um, it just dawned on me. Black church, the black church, seriously, is one of the biggest entities in black, the black communities all over America. Okay. And we talk about churches by the hundreds and not by the thousands. There's thousands and thousands and thousands of churches all over this country uh, that are filled with black parishioners every, you know, every Sunday. But nevertheless, what I'm saying is this. And one of the things I've noticed with us, I've noticed with me since I've been started back going about seven years ago. Why is it that you always got them people who every so often wants to get some money? Seriously, if they don't ask for a ride, they ask for a couple of dollars, and they ask for you know you to give them something. Now, since I've been there, I've had two people. Now, there's no joke. I've had two people, church folk, both guys. One of them asked me, "Uh, tomorrow I'm looking for a shoe," so I gave him a suit. He ain't never wore a suit. He ain't said nothing else about it. Nice suit. One of the first suits I ever bought down here in the DMV since you know since I've been there. And uh. It was double-breasted green suit, man. It was uh, a dark green suit. It was nice. Um, I can't find that material nowhere. No joke. Can't find that type of suit nowhere no more. But anyway, and that was all right. But he he threw a kind of threw a little shade since that time. I don't know why. You know, like uh, about two weeks ago, I was in, I was at service and uh, I was in church service and uh, I came out in the bathroom and. You know, we spoke. We used to say a little pleasantries. And he's like, why are you looking all, why are you acting, looking all sad, man? It's like, dude, um, my dad's been in the hospital for about a month, man. I ain't feel too happy about that. You know, and I told him that. And before that, same guy, about two, three years ago. I mean, actually, no, about about two years ago. I think. Yeah, it was two years ago. Uh, was talking about, uh, what were we talking about? Oh. He said, uh, you know, when I was in school, I ain't like guys like you. I'm like, really? I'm like, at first of all, I said, oh, really? And I'm thinking to myself, excuse my French, what the F did I ever do to you? Other than give you a fucking suit and try, you know, but try, you know, try to be your, be your friend. Not be your friend, but try to be cool with you, you know? And I was, I was offended by that. I never did nothing to him. I never said, said nothing bad about his family. I was always respectful to him as fan. I don't know what the hell that was about. I was just, I was just offended. When he said that was offended, I felt like, wow, this dude threw shade on me and shit. And I think one of the reasons why he said that because he's a jealous, he's jealous of me. Shouldn't be, because he drive a nice car. He drive a nice, try a nicer truck than I do. I'm like, you ain't got no reason to be to be like that at all. Period. Period. You know, but people do it anyway. You know. People get envious of you for the dumbest reasons. And I mean the dumbest reasons. I'm not sure why, but they do. Don't know why, but they do. You know. And another guy, and this is the other weird part. Now, this motherfucker, about two years ago, I gave him a uh, I gave him a, a book. It was a, it was it was this book about men's Bible verses or something. I, I it's something I gave, and and he was looking at the book. I think it, you know it was by men's teachers to the Bible. So I, I don't remember exactly what it was. I, I got it home somewhere. But anyway, so he looked at the book and it was oh it's nice and I didn't pay that much for it, you know. So he like and he looked at it and he was like, hey I like your book I like your book a lot. What you give it to me? Now, to sit there and say, why don't you give it to me? To me, really would have pissed me off even more if I didn't, you know, get along with the person, you know. And really, and here's the, the even worse part about it. After I gave him the book, that motherfucker ain't never said nothing to me. Girl. But hey, see what I'm saying? When, when people get me upset, get me out of my religion. When after I gave him the book, 
he stopped talking to me. We ain't talk, I mean, he, he didn't really say much of it after that. I was like, what did I do? So, you know, like I said before, um, not everybody your friend's your kind, not everybody your kind's your friend. And they're not. Even when you think they are, they're not. Just as much of a snake as anybody, uh, as anybody else. Why is traffic moving so sluggish? You know, that's the bad part about it, though. You know? It's like, wow. So, you know, I told my old lady, I said, you know, I don't really need no friends anymore. You know? Th the closest friends I ever really had, I mean, really tight friends, people who knew me inside out, they're not around anymore. Oh, man, what happened out here? They're not around anymore, you know? And that, to me, to this day, that still breaks my heart because we were close friends. You know, we, we, we knew each other pretty well. And I lost two of my best friends, man, 2006 and 2010, man. And I'm still tore up about that. I don't talk much about it, but I'm still tore up about it. You know. You know. But... The friends, whatever so-called friends I have, very few and very far and far between, but definitely very few, if any, you know, and I'm fine with that. I used to be really bothered by it, but now to me, if they ain't people I, I, that, I, that I even talk to every, you know, maybe every once a week or every other week or whatever, we ain't really, I don't consider them friends. I just say I'm acquaintances, you know. But I said what I said about, about 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 the church thing because you do have people who are opportunists out there, even in the church, and they'll try to see if they'll try to read you. They'll try to say, "Hey, you know, you got this, and you got that." And blah, blah. Tr trust me, they try to read me on stuff all the time. And Molly, like, "Oh, you go to church, you don't go to church, you gonna miss out on your blessing." I don't want you. You know, my thing of it is. And I've heard many people say it, <clears throat> and truthfully, the more I go, the more I see it being just that. Uh, the black church, as much as I love going there, and I do, there are good people there. There are. I love having conversations with the people out there that I go, go in and fellowship with every Sunday when I go, and I do. But there are times where to me it looks it appears to be more of a social construct and for many people to go it is it's a, co a social construct you know and because the majority are, there's a lot of organizations in the church that are, are predominantly run by black women now that's facts that's one of the reasons I, didn't, I, I stopped going one reason I don't go as much as I used to and, and, and especially within the last three years you know I said at some point I'll come back and do the things I was doing before. But right now I'm not feeling it. It's not feeling. It. Not feeling it at all. So that's so all I gotta say for right now, guys. This is DJ Wolf. I'm out.